Um, hi, I'm Jorobo. Uh, you can also call me Hugo if you want. Uh, I work at Protocol Labs uh, in the IP storage team, and we mainly take care of Kubo and Boxo, which is a library that mostly spin out of Kubo. And the goal is to the goal of Boxo is to uh, help people that wants to build application to build application using the Kubo primitives. Uh, and so I want to show you what I've been working on. Uh, one of the thing, which is Rapid. So the first step is, oh, I first talked about this at IPFS camp. Um, so this might be a bit repetitive if you already seen that talk, but I will show pretty numbers. Um, the, the first thing that's interesting to notice is that um, Torrent is a peer-to-peer -peer network, and yet it's probably the fastest way to download files on the internet. Um, assuming you have a, like, Assuming you don't dedicate huge amount of resources to your problem, just like having a thing and having work, uh, Torrent is very good at that. Of it takes lots of different computers, and because everyone is providing the content, um, you can download from lots of people in parallel. And so even if each one is like a small connection from a regional uh, thing with a small upload bandwidth, when you add all of them together, you can still download at multi gigabit speed, uh, and so. We call that negative one scaling because the more users you have, the faster your download goes because there are more users that are resharing the file. And so it's a question you might have whether we see that on IPFS. And one way I, could, I wanted to try this is we have this.ipfs.io, which is uh, it's, a, uh, it's just a, a website that hosts binaries for Kubo and other things. So you would guess that it's popular in the IPFS community. And so we see that at the time I've run the comment, we have uh, 42 people that were hosting it. Um, so if I try to download it though, I'm using Kubo right now, and you can see it's pretty slow. It's at uh, three maybe bytes per second, which is, I mean, it's not that slow. <laughs> Some people have worse internet than this, but I have uh, internet that's a few hundred times faster, so I would expect something faster. Um, and it's still not downloading very fast. So I'm gonna show you what I've made with Rapid. This is a common. Uh, it might look big. It's just because I'm listing a bunch of different gateways I want to download. And is there someone smart that realized that I'm downloading from localhost? It's because um, it's hard to find very fast gateways. And I, I use uh, the TC Stream Shaper, so it lo actually looks like localhost is uh, far away. So I'm not just very fast because I download from myself. Uh, I'm actually slowing down the connection. And so if I do that, yeah, 600 maybe byte per second, which is uh, about five gigabit per second. Um, I had to do download from localhost because I only have half of, the, of that. So when like my fiber is a bottleneck, I think it's pretty good. Um, so that was the demo. Okay, so now I will quickly go over how it works and why it's so fast. Um, the main idea is just that we have lots of different nodes that have our content. So why don't we just download from all of them at once? Um, now the hard question is, Okay, so if I download the same file from everyone at once, I'll have the same data 42 times, or like how many time, uh, how many nodes are in the network, which doesn't help me, actually. So now we need a question of how would we want to download different parts of the file from different nodes? And the slightly hard part is that in um, IPFS files or DAGs, um, there are Merkle trees, so that means we, we have to start somewhere, so at the root, for example, uh, because it's the first hash you have. And then going from there, we will be able to download. So at the start, we only know about the root. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of people that we have, uh, all of them are, so we have X, Y, and Z, which are people we're downloading from, and we're just gonna add them the first block uh, three times, or like the, everyone has the same block. And the point of doing this is to get the faster time to first byte. So we don't know actually here, like we don't know the latency of this node yet because we have not contacted them. So the question is, we just want the first that, like starting the baseline uh, as fast as possible. And so we raise them together. And this is not ideal on the long run because we'll get data, the duplicate data. But the goal is that quickly, let's say X is the first fast node. And so X got the root node. So what we'll be able to do is to move other people away from the root node to other parts of the DAG. So uh, right here, for example, we have X that's downloading both Y, A, and E. Um, due to how the underlying protocol works, which uh, here is a car file from a gateway, uh, we don't precisely know where the file is gonna be, so we kinda have to take a guess. Um, but then that allows us to like, for example, Y, Z is downloading E, we see that uh, X downloaded I. And so at this point we have like double the throughput 
or at least like we have x plus z throughput. Um, and so there is uh, this notion of there's numbers on, on the graph. And the point of the number is something that I call the metric. And it's just to stay to, to so like all of this is running on the client. And so we want our client to decide where do we want to go. Like why right now doesn't know, doesn't have a peer to download from. And so the thing that we will use is the metric. And it's a number of how bad do we don't want you to download from here, if that makes sense. Um, right now, it's just counting how many nodes are maybe going to give us the file. And the point of doing this is that then Y can look at the metric and see that A is not downloaded and it has a metric of one. So it's the best node here that we have access to. So Y is going to start downloading A. And so basically, we just keep going down in the graph and we search um, what is the blocks that we don't have yet and what are the blocks that have the lowest metric. Uh, because the lower the metric, the lower the competition for that block is. Um, now we have something interesting that happens. Uh, it's kind of, so it's a, an issue of, uh, sorry, different protocols uh, allows you to do different things. The particular protocol that is being used right now is Scala the Gateway, and it doesn't allow you to tell you, oh, I don't want a block. You tell it, oh, I want some blocks. Um, with recent addition that Hannah has been talking uh, earlier, we can guide it more precisely in the DAG. But it's still, uh, you cannot send a, like a negative uh, want. So it, it will happen sometime that we get duplicate data. Here, uh, X send us E, that Z already downloaded. And so at this point, uh, we do a, I think it's maybe a hack, but it works well. Uh, we just kill the connection. Um, because when we kill the connection, then the, the, we'll, we'll stop receiving data and we'll restart somewhere else in the graph. So X uh, just killed the connection. And it's going to go in the graph. We see that I have a metric of zero. So X started downloading I. And X uh, continued to go down the graph. Uh, and the last part about the algorithm is what happened when we fully download something. So right now, X uh, have been going down. Everyone has been going down in the graph. But like X is very fast, so it's going to download all the nodes below I. And now it just downloaded. So what happened is when a node cannot find work in the local space of the graph that it is, uh, we're going to backtrack. So we just look at the graph and we see that we, move, we removed I. X is back at the root and so it would re, re go down. It would uh, select A in that case probably. Um, so that was the algorithm, which is it's mostly fine. So the good point is that um, it's actually very light to block because we're moving a few pointers around, allocating a bit of memory. Um, now the other question is uh, one critical feature that we want to support is that we want to have more than one protocol. And so how do we do that? Um, the first protocol that's interesting, GraphSync. Um, this is interesting because it's used by Filecoin and it allows you to express uh, very clearly where you want to go in a graph before you even have received the graph. So in a single round trip, I can send you a CID, but also a selector. And a selector will allow the server to run the traversal logic themselves and they will uh, reach the same result as me. So I don't need to send like a message every time I want a new block. Uh, the server is going to do most of that work for me. And so that would be interesting to support. And I don't think it would be that hard. Um, the API is mostly the same. Like the behavior is the same as uh, downloading a car over a gateway. We just have some uh, IPR work around like how do we pass selectors and how do we decode them. Um, the other one which is very interesting for Kubo precisely is BitSwap because um, currently Kubo already used BitSwap for everything. And so we su if we stop supporting BitSwap, like you cannot fetch your data which is kind of sad. So we want compatibility with uh, older clients, um, at least for some time. And so this will work in a slightly different way. So uh, we need to keep track of the metric. And here we see X, that's a bit swap here. And so um, to maintain the metric on bit swap, uh, okay, sorry, one thing. Bit swap, because it downloads block one by one, if I just ask you for one block and then I move around in the graph, I will have actually most of my, down, of my connection will not be used because um, the speed of light is not that fast. So when I send you a request, um, you send me the answer, and there's a bunch of delay where like, you just don't have more things to send to me, so you don't send to me. So we need to ask for more than one block. And the way I'm doing this is using a snake. So I create a link list, which is the dotted lines below X, that points to all the node that X has traversed and is going to download. And basically, uh, by following where the snake is going, 
you can, when the snake goes up, uh, do plus one, uh, no, do minus one, and then do plus one when it goes down. And so that maintains a metric. And again, the point of the metric is to add the nodes to repar, uh, to just partition themselves in the DAG correctly. So they are able to download different parts. Um, I have written most of the code on the train. Uh, it doesn't work well, sadly. Um, so I, I might do a demo by the end of, uh, of IPFS thing if I finish it. Uh, probably not. So <laughs> Uh, finish this next week. Um, the, the features that current um, Rapid is missing, uh, we, right now it doesn't do content routing. So basically at the start you hard code a bunch of providers and it's gonna try to use them. Um, I want to do this with uh, similar to congestion control where basically we look at how fast our consumer, so the code that's calling Rapid is consuming blocks. And if the consumer is always waiting um, like it, it can receive more blocks, but not giving them. Then we'll uh, spot a random worker that traverses the graph until you find a node that's not downloaded. And then it will do a either DHT, IPNI, um, whatever content router, uh, whatever content router you want to use um, request. And so basically th that will have like a similar behavior of uh, when we need more workers, we'll spawn workers at random in the graph uh, when we find them in the content router you're using. Um, the other thing is strongly order request. Right now, it gives you the order. So it always starts from the root to the leaves, but between the leaves, it doesn't have any preference. Um, so that means that if you're downloading a video, you can do an incremental verification of the video, that's perfectly fine, but you might view the middle before you view the start, um, which is slightly annoying for some features. Um, and the last one is block store caching. Uh, in Kubo, we have a block store. Uh, we use the block store to not re-download the same blocks twice. Um, we would like to, like, it would be nice if Rabbit could or, uh, also use the block store. So if you already have a block, you don't download it again. Um, this would be optional. If you're using Rapid, you don't have to use the, like, the block store. You could add a block store or you could run with that one. And with that one, we'll just download everything all the time. Um, when? Hopefully in a Kubo node near you, uh, 2023. Uh, at the start, we're probably only going to use it for IPFS get and IPFS pin. Um, that's because uh, in IPFS get, we have a control over the file system. And so we can do a smart thing where if I get the middle of the video before the start, well, I just go write the middle. Like um, Linux supports features for seeking and uh, writing at arbitrary of certain files. So that means that instead of like, we don't need to stream in order, we can write the file as it comes. And uh, the second one is IPFS pin for the same reason. IPFS pin just download everything into your block store and make sure node reshare it. And so again, we don't care about the order it arrives uh, for the block store. Uh, and it will also be able, we'll, we'll uh, put it probably in Boxo. So if you're building an application, you want a fast download client, hopefully you could use it. Um, then there's the uh, more work that I would like to be, uh, like the ideal state for me. Uh, Multiple throughput is already really good. Like I was seeing, the, as we've seen in the demo, that was far, uh, fast enough. Um, Single peer throughput though is not very good. It depends a lot on the underlying protocol you're using. Uh, if you're using a car gateway, it's somewhat fast, but that's basically limited by the underlying protocol. So um, if we continue to use BitSwap for peer-to-peer -peer connection in Kubo, we'll have to optimize the BitSwap server so it will be able to send blocks faster because right now it's sending blocks uh, quite slowly. So even if Rabbit is asking you for a lot of data, you're gonna give that lots of data slowly. So Rapid cannot make that faster. So that would be nice if the server would be faster itself. And then uh, I would like to have faster time to first byte than centralized services. Um, it's kind of hard, but basically, ideally in a content routing system, because we don't care about where we're downloading the data from, I don't have to connect to a centralized server somewhere that is being trusted. Um, I can just connect, uh, connect to my neighbor if my neighbor has the data. And your neighbor actually, in a ISP sense is very wide because of uh, how most ISP network work. So there is a somewhat big cost to going from like between two customers in the same ISP is usually faster than going to another customer in the same city, but in a different ISP. Um, another thing I would like is uh, have it support in more places because it seems useful to have fast downloads. Um, I want to try the GoWasm thing. I know the performance is not very good, but I kind of want to try it anyway. Uh, maybe writing, maybe uh, rewriting it in, J in Rust or JavaScript. Um, what I'll probably do for this is make a spec explaining how it works and how you can re-implement your own. And if someone wants to make it in Rust, uh, then we'll be able to use it in Chromium maybe. Uh, that would be awesome. So if you want to find the work, uh, I have a fork here with a pull request. 
uh, QR code. And that was it, if you have any questions.